to this week's Shed Adventures. It's a rather cold, drab, windy January January day. Not very, not very pleasant at all. And Shed HQ here is all full of damp and musky smells. Um, so I'll put the heater on and I'll go for a shower. <laughs> and uh, I'm using my own advice. So we have the old fingerless mitts on this morning. And if I was feeling a bit colder, I'd put a put a bobble hat on. We've seen the video on keeping warm and keep my baldy head warm. Lots of heat going out there. You can just feel it, all that blood near the surface getting cold. But anyway, the heat is on. So what are we going to, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I had my normal look around, but I was sat in the kitchen this morning and I was making myself scrambled egg on toast and really, really enjoyed it. But what did I make it with? and something that I really enjoyed. So sat on the window ledge in the kitchen is this little pot, this little pot of spoons and um, these these little 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 scrapers. And there's a tent peg, but put that to one side. Um, and I reached here for this lovely thing to make my to make my scrambled egg. And I made this. And the beauty of it is because you make it it perfectly fits your it perfectly fits your hand um and actually bit anal i have to say i made it fit the pot so the angle there and the angle here and the angle there is when you have your pot of of lovely eggs and it's just starting to go off and that's the important bit for perfect scrambled eggs instead of trying to get in the corners where it always starts to burn you just have the enjoyment of sitting here with this lovely spatula that you've made that fits into your hand that is so tactile and you make the scrambled egg and you don't think too much of it but this morning I looked at it and I looked at these other things and I thought we'll talk about this um, because I've never really got into the sort of the whole wood side of, uh, of things I enjoy doing but um, so where did this come from and um, what is it made out of well it's made out of out of this it's made out of a rough, a rough old bit of firewood. Something that's just, is in the wood pile and is just going to be burnt. Now this is quite good wood for a, for, for a wood pile. I think it's, I think it's beech, so relatively hard wood. It's not some horrible old, old soft pine from B&Q. Um, and it's been, it's been well dried. So the people I buy my wood from, um, save the environment um, they produce a very dry nice nice lump of wood um, and all you do with that particular lump of wood is what I've done here is you get your axe you give it a hit and you take a slice off and then lo and behold from this bit of wood that would have just been lost and burnt without too much effort and with a relatively limited amount of tools and really limited skills, you can turn out this. Um, so hidden inside a piece of firewood is quite literally a beautiful wooden beach spatula if you can just find the time and the effort to get it out. And I have to say every time I burn one of these bits of wood, I look at it and it's really a little sad that it's going on the fire and it couldn't be it couldn't be turned into to something in my mind as 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 beautiful as a handmade spa handmade spatula or indeed a a a lovely handmade spoon. Eating 
you are going to think I'm a lunatic, but eating your porridge with that on a morning, which is again a perfect fit to your hand, a perfect fit to your lips, is just so much nicer than eating your porridge with your normal stainless steel spoon that's just come out of the drawer. And with the right finish, that's, that's got a nice bit of tongue oil on it. Um, it's perfectly clean. It washes up really easily and it just gets dropped back. It just gets dropped back into into the pot. Um, that's a tablespoon. I made that a tablespoon. So that's used um, whenever you want to take flour out of the big, the big flour pot. Um, that's a full tablespoon. Um, and there's various bits and bobs. There's even an, a mallet. So you can see if you take a big lump of wood inside that piece of wood, just waiting to get out with a few, a few chops and a few strokes of the saw and a little bit of whittling is a really, and if I find a, yeah, here's a, if you find a chisel, a really, really nice mallet. Um, again, fits my hand absolutely perfectly. Of course it would, because I made it. And you can sit here and, and tap away with something you made yourself. Um, you could go to tool, um, tool hire or speedy tools or whatever and, and get yourself or B&Q, or you can make yourself something. And that speech, that's a nice, that's a nice solid mallet that will, well, that will see me through the rest of my life. Um, hopefully I'll be passing it on to my, my grandson who likes silly little things like that. Granddad's handmade mallet. So, um, how do you make these things? I don't think a detailed video of me in the workshop um, showing you how to do it step by step is really required. A bit of a bit of um, common sense. Go and find yourself a. If you haven't got a, a wood shed and you don't have a wood burner, go and find a friend who has. I'm sure somewhere they will have a nice chunk of of good wood. Um, you need an axe probably to 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 chop off a nice a nice bit like this, and then basic tools. Spoke shave that came from the second hand shop. That's great, great for shaping. Good old number four Stanley smoothing plane. Um, again, that's another another second hand hand um, shop find, uh, and then. If you want to get into the more technical spoons, a couple of shaped items. This, you can see this is this is nice and old. Um, this was a recent find. I walked into, I think it was in Lyme Regis, I walked into a pretty grotty grockle shop for the for the tourists, and there was a a tin bath with old tools in it. Well, look at this beauty. And you'll never find anything, anything as good. It's the wood, um, it's the steel. Baddis and Sons, Sheffield, England. So Sheffield, English, English steel. That will be an ash handle. And you can see how that works. Look at the fit in that. So I can sit here. Here's one we're currently making. So I can sit here and I can just shape and gouge this out. What a great way to spend it. A windy wet afternoon I'll go and get a cup of tea on in a minute and I'll sit here for just until I'm fed up 40 minutes or so I haven't actually this is brilliant I haven't actually used this I haven't actually used this let yet oh this is gonna be fantastic and I can shape that the other one that was bought as a Christmas present these are really inexpensive this is quite cheap but it needs a it needs a sharpen and another tool that you can use to make the spoon. And again, you start off with something like this, maybe a bit thicker. You quite literally draw a, draw your spoon onto it. Um, if you've got a jigsaw, just jigsaw out the big chunks here that you don't want. Um, and then just start working on it. It's um, it's really just, just do it. Just, just have a go. If you're a bit in doubt, maybe start off with something as simple as a as a tent peg. Why make a tent peg? Well, these are absolutely, absolutely brilliant. They're super lightweight. Um, beach, bit of firewood. 
Again, you just get a big square lump like that. I normally, to start my fire every night, knock up a bit of kindling. So we just smack that with a with an axe and make some kindling. But I look at these every time I put them on the fire and I'm going, oh, inside that, with probably 50 strokes of a, of a plane, is a beautiful, beautiful temp peg just waiting to get out. Um, and I use these genuinely. Here's my, here's my bags of, bag of tent pegs. You can either have, and wait for weight, a bulldog tent peg like that. That's aluminium. Or you can have that. And believe it or not, I would actually say the wood's lighter. Um, and banged in the ground better. It's got a much bigger bearing surface here when, the, when it's being pulled. So that's a much more effective a much more effective peg. And because of the shape, sharp that way, when you want to get it out, you literally just push it forward, breaks the suction and pulls out. And I have in my temp peg bag many, many, many different sized wooden tent pegs made out of kindling that I'd cut up one night and just and just couldn't that's a nice one that's a that's you can just look at the tightness of the grain in that that's really really good bit of beach what do you finish them off with um these will be finished off with either a bit of tongue oil normally tongue oil for anything that i'm going to eat with because tongue oil you can um you can drink it i wouldn't advise it but you can it's um it's edible um and yeah um or a bit of maybe boiled linseed oil uh, probably on these will be done with boiled linseed oil and they're just a pleasure to use a pleasure to hold you've got the fact that you've made them so you get a little bit of satisfaction and actually when other people's tents are falling down um, that's a nice look that was another Christmas Christmas present I think that's actually from Sweden made in Sweden and again you can just sit here and Design and just go, yeah, that's how I want it. I want my thumb to fit in there. I want my, that's very nice. And then I've got, well, actually, I don't want to hold it that way. What I want to do, I want to eat with it. And you, and you can just design it and make it. And at the end, a little bit of um, sandpaper, a little bit of tongue oil, and you're left with, you're left with a really beautiful, mallet spatula spoon or wherever it's gone i've thrown it away now tent peg and you can enjoy you can enjoy using them um for many years and uh regret as i do every time i chuck that on the fire so there we are just a little introduction um there's lots of good books on it this is a lovely book called spoon there we are a guide to spoon carving and the new wood culture barn the spoon and uh, you can see all the lovely lovely things that um, this gentleman makes and a step-by-step -step guide um, about where to find the wood uh, and how to make the various the various bits and pieces and a few techniques so you can hold it properly and obviously not stab yourself or hit yourself in the in the in the foot but you don't need you don't need great big vices um, although it can be handy at times and some very basic very cheap tools and you're off to creating yourself and people do laugh at me my daughters laugh at me um, and uh, they go why are you using that <laughs> that spatula again you've been making You've been making scrambled eggs this morning, haven't you, Dad? Yeah. Um, but I enjoy it, and that's what counts. And I get a ridiculous, a ridiculous amount of pleasure in uh, in holding that. I'm often seen washing it up with with great love and affection, and popping it back, uh, popping it back in the jug. So that's it for today. Now I did mention about English longbows last time, and uh, I left you with me setting off to talk to. Uh, the vicar about uh, can I get into the uh, into the graveyard where all the 
all the yew trees are to make a yew, a yew longbow and can I find a, a suitable piece of piece of wood for a stave so I can start showing you the the long drawn out process of making a longbow and the answer is yes not a problem so um, next episode will be a will be a full quite a lengthy episode on finding we'll go and find one and we'll cut it down and then over a series of episodes we'll go through the processes so at the end of it we'll have hopefully because they do break and I've got a number of tools you've seen the axe um, actually I've got a surprising number of tools with handles that are made from bits of broken longbow so they do go bang sometimes if you're if you're unlucky but we'll just see how we get on and hopefully after a few episodes we'll end up with a beautiful seven foot maybe six foot English uh, U longbow. So that's it for today. Um, thank you for all your support. We seem to be up to 80 subscribers, which is fantastic. So let's, I'm going to set myself the goal of trying to get us up to, up to uh, 100. So if you've got friends and family, please recommend. Uh, I know this is a bit of an oddity of a channel and it's not really directed at sailing or, or climbing or woodwork. It's all over the place. Um, but there we are. That's what we've got and people will like it or people will not. So if you do like it, please like and subscribe. Um, thank you everyone for your comments. I try and write back to everyone um, and I'm more than happy to have suggestions about what you'd like to see or I've got this wrong, I've got that right um, because we're open to suggestions and people have got some great ideas out there uh, and many people have got more knowledge than I have. So please share it with us. It's a little community of, uh, of people with great, with, with great ideas and some, and some great skills. So have a fantastic weekend um, and I'll see you very shortly um, hunting for the makings of, a, of an English longbow and we'll be climbing around a few yew trees. So hopefully people will be looking forward to that. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye now.